One of the state's strongest myths is that it is necessary for the provision of law, justice, and the enforcement thereof. This video will attack this myth using the following considerations. Historical considerations, merchant law, medieval Iceland, medieval Ireland, theoretical and present considerations for anarchic law and justice, theoretical and present considerations for status law and justice, and response to common objections. You'll notice a number that will appear in the bottom right corner when I make a claim. That indicates a corresponding numbered group of sources cited in the description. Let us begin. First, we must define the state in order to give ourselves a frame of reference. The state is a monopoly on the provision of law and justice in a given geographic area. Its defining characteristic is that it creates forced barriers to entry which prevent anyone else from administering law and justice. So keep that in mind throughout the video. For now, the... All right, uh, today I want to talk about this video by Junior Bacon Chi, um, who is talking about statist myths uh, and that in relation to the law. And uh, right off the bat, as you have seen, he claims that um, the government or state has a monopoly on the provision of law. So is this true? Um, firstly, uh, you can ask yourself, is the government state a monopoly? And I have uh, already, already addressed that in a prior video, so you can watch that. I will um, get that in the bar um, with the info. And uh, you will see that the state does not meet the requirements to be a monopoly. So, um, firstly, uh, you have to ask yourself, what kind of state are we talking about? Uh, a totalitarian state, um, a democracy, uh, what are we talking about? Um, and I would like to address, uh, because uh, Junior Bacon Chi has not uh, clarified that, I would like to address democracy. So, he says, there's a um, barrier to entry, an artificial one, uh, created to not let anyone make any law except for the people in the state or the government. Um, and you can see in a democracy, uh, the barrier to ent uh, entry is not there. Uh, you can simply uh, get on the ballot and uh, try to be elected and represent your views. So in a representative democracy it is um, fairly easy to take part in the legislative process. Uh, and now you can ask yourself what is, uh, what would be the case if uh, the government wouldn't be allowed only uh, to make laws in a democratic society. So you would have uh, certain areas where not only the law of the government um, would exist, but also the law of other people who simply decided, um, oh, okay, uh, in, in this area um, we have law X, but um, made by the government, but um, we will also um, instill the law uh, X1. So what would happen? I, we will take a look in a, a little um, graph. Okay, so here we are at the uh, little drawing and uh, I have to find two regions, two geographic regions, region A uh, controlled by the state with state law, law X, and here we have region B also controlled uh, by the state or government, but also here we have um, some vigilante or someone else um, making law X1. 
and x and x1 um, are not the same so uh, they collide and exclude each other um, and if you break law x or x1 you have certain outcomes you have outcome y and outcome y1 so this would be punishments whatever um, they would consist of uh, now the question is if um, a certain person would live in region B um, the person would have to decide which law to adhere to and therefore it can decide um, about the outcome Y or Y1 which one he is willing to take um, meaning which law he is going to break so if Y is a worse out outcome than Y1 uh, the person will break law X1 and vice versa so uh, the person cannot really decide which law to adhere to if Y and Y1 are equally bad so if the punishment would be uh, death or life imprisonment um, the person could not decide which law to adhere to so we have a major conflict here in defining a homogeneous outcome okay so now we are moving on uh, to look at what the individual would do in both uh, regions um, we can see here in region B we do not have a homogeneous outcome for the individuals so uh, as you will see in the video of Junior Bacon Chi uh, he has some examples um, medieval Iceland and medieval Ireland I believe and in both situations uh, you have some kind of web um, of human interaction and uh, this web compels you to uh, go before a certain judge and this judge is um, let's say uh, not in not really instilled for life um, he can uh, practice the law at his own will um, and can decide uh, upon the merits of, of this kind of social web and what this social web believes to be uh, okay at the moment believes to be lawful um, so uh, this would be the situation here in region B we have multiple um, laws or conceptions of law and a homogeneous outcome would not uh, be there um, but on the other hand um, we have here law X with outcome Y and no conflict like in region B so people would like to have some assurance that their behavior uh, would not automatically condemn them um, to either the punishments of one lawmaker or another so they will migrate off to a region with homogeneous outcome because um, that's just human intuition uh, you wouldn't like to be punished all the time for all your behavior maybe even equally bad punishment that would be really uh, really stupid to stay here okay um, so the examples he's, uh, he has given um, are quite inspired and they they have their merits um, I believe this the social web um, that that both uh, both of the models have 
um, is interesting, but the the real problem is the homogeneous outcome, and uh, you cannot manipulate a lawful system that has just a homogeneous outcome. You can manipu manipulate this, but not this, and so the advantage of one law in one region is clear.